What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's Facebook uh, live broadcast, The Art of High Ticket Wholesaling. Um, today, uh, it's a, it's great to have, it's a pleasure of mine to have on a good buddy of mine and one of the top um, wholesalers in the entire galaxy, uh, Mr. Mark Evans DM. What's up, Mark? What's up, DJ? How you doing, buddy? Hey, good, man. Good, good. Um, so, um, you know, those of you that um, obviously, if, if you haven't heard of Mark, um, you're probably living under a rock. But <laughs> if you're not living under a rock and you have heard of him, uh, absolutely, um, you know, has been in the real estate game for many years. And uh, Mark, can you share with people on here just a little bit that don't know you a little bit about, you know, who you are and, and what you've done and kind of what you're doing now? Yeah, first of all, if, I, if you don't know me, I apologize. I'm going to fire the marketing team. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, small town Ohio boy laying in bed trying to figure out how to make money. Didn't want to go to college. Did it wasn't even my thought process. Barely graduated high school. Just wanted to get rich, um, and you know that was it. Then met a lot of people. Real estate, real estate, real estate. I'm not that smart, so I realized, hey, maybe real estate's it. Because the guys that were telling me real estate, they definitely didn't look smarter or act smarter than me. So I kind of dove into that at 18 years old. Started learning the game. Um, <clears throat> got into lease options back then and uh, navigated my way, bought a lot of doors that way, owner financing. And before you know it, I almost became bankrupt because I was doing everything myself and spending more money. Right, Making money is easy. Keeping it's a different story. Mm -hmm. So I just started knowledging up on that um, and then you know, just started building it. The truth is the way I keep, kept myself out of bankruptcy is I wholesaled my way out. I never knew wholesaling existed for the first four years of my business. So because it was different back then. This is 96 to 2000, right? So what happened is I just, it was the fastest way I could make money to get out of the hole and wholesaling was it. That was the strategy. So did that strategy. Now I have more knowledge and just kept going and going and built a pretty big portfolio of assets. And then now, you know, fast forward in 2005, that's when my real business changed. December, uh, October 8, 2005. So my grandmother died. Um, she had stage four cancer. She went into a basic doctor checkup, boom, you're going to die in two weeks. She goes, lays in bed, and she's done. So to me, it was like a big moment saying, wow, there's so much more to life than just working and making a lot of money. How can I do more, give back, legacy, live the legacy while I'm alive and all that? And really just went on a journey. My, my girlfriend, then now wife, Dina, we went on a seven-year trip around the world, visited a lot of cool locations, and wrote books while I was on the journey and all that, and kind of just sharing my knowledge. Because as you know, we get hit up all the time. Hey, will you teach me? Will you teach me? It's like... I don't have enough time to teach, nor do I enjoy it like one-on-one, -on -one, but I will share the words and kind of like what I'm up to and how, you know, how we've done it. And today in Florida part-time and Ohio part-time. So with a three-year-old, almost a three-year-old kid. So it's, it's pretty good business. Pretty good life. Yeah, and I saw him in Malibu when we were together. He's, a, he's a, got some energy to put him on <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's a maniac. Hey, pretty pretty soon, man. He'll be uh, he'll be uh, you know driving and, and telling me that uh, hey, dad, like my son, I don't uh, the gas line just came off my car. I'm like, dude, what do you run over? Like, come on, you know. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, so okay, I it was the curb. I, I you know, <laughs> yeah, I know. So, um, uh, but so you're doing uh, so wholesaling. I didn't know that even. So wholesaling actually brought you out of um, you know a situation that financially was you know tough on you. Yeah, well, I was near bankrupt. I, was, I literally filled out the paperwork. I still have it today here in the office, but I wrote out the paperwork to file BK. And I was like, man, I'm a loser if I go BK. And just, you know, that self-talk that you have. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was like, what's the solution? If I knew the solution, what would it be? And I kept hearing about wholesaling. And then ultimately, he's out back. Ultimately, I started wholesaling. Um, and this is when I was in Ohio, small town Ohio. So I really, in Columbus, I really just figured out a way to make a lot of money very quickly. And kept me out of BK. Man, I, did, I, I didn't even know that, man. Yeah. So, so, so I've been doing this since 05. You've been doing this, you know, much longer than me. Um, and so, uh, you know, as far as like, I guess um, from what you see, Mark, let's get into kind of maybe help some of these wholesalers that are struggling to connect dots and certain things. Um, what do you see as the... Uh, and it might be my, a mindset talk to some, but what do you see is kind of, you know, the number one or number one or two things that um, where wholesalers are kind of missing the mark and, and um, it's really costing them a lot of deals. 
Well, they're focusing on drama, not data. I mean, that's plain and simple. It's that because the data yeah. will give you direction, the drama gives you drama. I mean, the problem with the pity party is no one brings gifts, right? Like, oh, I'm broke. Oh, I suck. I, oh, I'm not good on the call. No one cares. Get over yourself. You're not that important in the grand scheme of things. You're a pin drop in the ocean. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. a lot of people are a bunch of wimps, to be honest with you. I'm being nice about it. I'm trying to keep this uh, uh, <laughs> t- t- uh, TV 14 or PG. Whatever. So, ba- so basically you're saying, you know, grow a pair, right? Yeah, well, grow a pair and do the work. I mean, everyone, you know, especially now, you know, it's 2018. Like, get, like, get on the phone. The phone is your friend. If you're, if you're a samurai, the phone is your sword. You know what I yeah. mean? If you're a jet fighter pilot, the phone is your, your uh, air, aircraft. So you got to do the work. And so many people are on the phone playing stupid games, you know, t- texting their girlfriend's pics or boyfriend's pics or whatever, probably inappropriate pics either or. But at the end of the day, like pick up the phone and have a conversation and don't make it about you, make it about them, you know, and listen. Like, you know, that's why we have two ears and one mouth. We, we got to listen twice as much. Absolutely, man. And, you know, it's funny when when uh, even when I started, you know, we kind of talked about this. It was like, oh, I don't have this CRM or I don't know, you know, what, what do I need to buy this and I need to buy that. And it's like, dude, like when I started, I had a, a cell phone, barely. Um, I don't even know where I can text back then. I think we could. And um, and a notepad. Right. And like that was it. And, 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 you know, just getting on the phone and, and, you know, talking to people. So, um, so obviously, yeah. Hey, great advice. Data, not drama. Um, you know, so many people, you guys, you know, I see this a lot too. People give so much emotion. Oh, this deal fell apart and all. And it's, Oh, I got this deal. I'm going to make, you know, 10 grand on and they're up here. And then, and then something happens and they're down here. And, you know, it's like anything in life, you guys, it's whether it's, it's baseball, right. Or it's business. It's about keeping your energy and your emotions intact and under control. And, um, you know, not that all of us don't get frustrated. How can I throw you too high and my lows not too low? Um, and, um, and, you know, I think, like for me at least, as I've evolved and grown, as in uh, life and in business, that's really been a, a huge key for me. Has that been a, something big for you too? Absolutely, for sure, man. I mean, I, yeah. I think at the end of the day, if a deal falls through and it ruins your day, it's just because you don't have enough deals going on. I mean, you know, I we have deals by like fall through every day, probably. I don't. The truth is, I don't even know. I don't care about it as much. But you know, in the beginning, you know, you have to have so much going on. It's kind of like going fishing. If you go out fishing and you're trying to catch the big one, and you only have one line in the water, like, you might get lucky and get one, but at the end of the day, like, if you have 100 lines in the water, your chances go up, your odds go up. You have 500, and then we could even take it a step further. Now we throw out a big net. <laughs> now we're netting and fishing. Now, So it's like, what are you trying to really accomplish? At the end of the day, though, a lot of people like talking about it, but not necessarily doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, hey, talk to me about, um, you know, you're big on, which which I am a, uh, became a, a big fan on um, after hearing from you, um, you know, at our um, uh, mastermind event in Malibu that we were at together. Share, um, you know, you talk about KPIs, yep. right, and having um, – share, share with people as far as um, what that is. And even if they're – even if they're just starting out and it's just them and they don't have a team, uh, but obviously, especially with a team, you know – um, share with people what uh, KPIs are. Yeah, KPIs are key performance indicators. So, for example, if you're running, you know, if you're a runner, right, you know what your 400 yard is or your four meters or whatever. I don't even know what 400 meters or whatever it is. So, just like in real estate, just like, well, you play baseball, KPIs would be what's your batting average? That's a KPI. You know, what's your run average? What's your, you know, whatever you guys, you know, factor in there, what's your win rate and all that. Just like in, Business, how many calls do I need to make? How many conversations do I need to have to get a contract, to close a deal, to make X? Yeah. And then, and then, I mean, it's really just understanding your data. So, so it's all like action because you see people, you know, chasing deals. And so it's all about, um, um, you're, so what you're talking about is more like activity. Like, hey, this is how many calls I made. This is how many people I talked to. This is how many buyers I have that I put on the board. And this is how many properties I sold. 
It's called data. data. The data, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I, it's just like football. No one's going to go to a football game and just show up and whatever happens, happens. You have to know the sport you're in. You have to be prepared. You have to know if you score a touchdown, it's worth X points. If you kick a field goal, it's worth X points. A, field, a point after touchdown, X point. Like, if you just, a lot of people, I'd say 99% of the people I talk to are just showing up to football practice. Um, and their problem is they're on a soccer field or, or they're at a, a wrestling match or something. It's just, they're not, they're not prepared. They're not, it's kind of sad, honestly. The more I, get, the more I'm in the game, the more I realize how much people are so in their head. Like, they're just lying in themselves or allowing other people to lie to them because they don't think they have to do any work. So yeah, they, they know the stats better about athletes than they do their own business. And that's all it is. Yeah. Business KPI. So if I said, Oh, what's Tom Brady's winning stat? They're like, Brrr. you know, they know everything about him, what he ate last night. And I'm like, all right, cool. So how's your business doing? Well, you don't understand. It's really difficult to figure that out. No, it's not. It's data. So to me, man, I, I, I can't ingrain it enough for people to step their game up and really start focusing on data. Yep. Absolutely, man. Um, totally, you know, when, when I, when we talked about that at the event, that really helped me to even say, gosh, you know what? I'm not, I'm not tracking that enough. I'm not tracking my uh, sales team enough. Um, like I should be you knowing like how many calls are they making? How many, you know, uh, people, are they talking to? how many buyers, how many products, you know, their contract, you know, so that was even, you know, huge for me. And, you know, I've, you know, been doing this, you know, sold over a couple thousand deals and, and so, um, Anyway, so KPI is awesome, you guys, uh, for understanding where you are, what you're doing. And really, the market goes back to like, um, you know, when I was, uh, gosh, 21 years ago, I started door knocking. I don't know if you ever door knocked. Absolutely. I'm, sure you, I'm sure you did with your, uh, with your hustle. But I remember doing that. You guys were like, man, DJ, how are you making so much more? I said, dude, when I go to an appointment, um, if no one's there, they say no or whatever to buy a security system. I just say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to door knock for 10 hours a week. If I door knock for 10 hours a week, I'm going to get 10 appointments. Out of those 10 appointments, one's going to cancel, two will buy, seven will buy. I'm going to make this much per deal. So I just kind of broke it down and, and more or less reverse engineered and said, hey, the numbers will take care of themselves, right? All I need to do is focus on my action. I need to door knock for 10 hours a week. If I do that, I'm going to make this much just going to happen. And it's kind of like, Kind of what you guys, it kind of goes back to the KPIs, right? Taking, I need to uh, be on the phone or, or make this many calls this week, that kind of thing, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, we're all starting from different places and where we're at. So door knocking, I, I wouldn't do it now, but there's definitely an opportunity there if you have no money. You know, like you can't afford yeah. marketing, get on the streets and beat the streets because I'm not doing it. You're not going to do it today. No. That means to, to me, though, that's not like, oh, well, it doesn't work. It's like, no, it's just we're not there. We're past that stage. And that's not to say in a disrespectful way. It's just it is what it is. So hey man, I could put a note on a pigeon and, and send it to you, and it'll get there. But it's, I'd rather shoot you a text. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's all it's all timing and where you're at. A lot like again, use that as an opportunity, not an obstacle. DJ and I is not going to go out there and door knock. That opens it up for you. That means there's two less people on the street. That's not going to do that. So the biggest competitor in that space would be that guy looking back at you in the mirror or guy. You know. Yeah. Sure. I love it, man. And so, um, so data, so, um, no, man, I, I love it. So you're in, uh, obviously in the uh, Columbus, Ohio, uh, Columbus, Ohio, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Akron, Canton, kind of that whole region. And, um, last month, um, you did, you know, quite a few deals and, um, you know, you've been fortunate enough to scale it up to, uh, a pretty, a pretty cool point, uh, you know, where you guys are doing deals and you're overseeing things. Um, and, uh, probably can still out hustle everyone on the team. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, I'm not active in the business much at all. <clears throat> I'm more on the business for sure than in it. Um, actually I'm in the office today, just hanging out, having a conversation with team members, some stuff going on personal side, you know, not even business side, but personal always affects the business if you know what I mean. So for me, it's more Peter runs the day to day deals with the team. Um, I'm more higher, like on top of it, looking where the opportunities are and just trying to be a better leader. So, so Mark, in, in your market, um, and you can share whatever you want, um, sure. what, what would you say, you know, it, what would be classified as like, or, or Pittsburgh, like my market, right, where I am, um, uh, Pittsburgh, PA, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, you know, Indiana, um, 
there's a, uh, you know, various markets, Michigan, if you um, are out there, um, but just don't go to Flint. No, <laughs> maybe you want to go to Flint, you know, houses are like 500 plus now. Um, but um, what would you say that is, if, if someone's watching this and just get going and they would say, I'm going to, I'm going to do, even though they should do multiple things, um, what the, the top way as far as actually getting deals right now for someone that's trying to in more of an undervalued kind of market like like we run it? I mean, listen, the internet exists. I would go to Craigslist and go to real estate services and type in, we buy houses <clears throat> and call every single person on that. And then I'd extract their email and I'd send them a follow-up email. Hey, nice talking to you, DJ. Hope to work with you in the future. Boom. Next call. Hey, John, what's up? My name's Mark. How are you doing? I heard you're an investor. I saw you're out on Craigslist. What are you buying? Well, I'm buying a three-bed, two-bath on the west side. Great. What kind of numbers do you like to be at? Are you retail, rehab? But So, like, again, it's doing the work. you got to get out there and just do the work. And if you have money, I love direct mail. I mean, direct mail to me, we use direct mail every day, So, and I have for 22 years. But I understand the value in it, and we have capital now. And even when I didn't have capital, um, I, would, I would save up enough money to do my first direct mail, generate some revenue, redeploy, don't go buy a car, buy more direct mail, and uh, – go from there. But at the end of the day, man, I, I really, there's no other easier way than picking up the phone. I really, I don't care who you are or where you're starting at. If you've never done a deal, you just got to get involved in the conversations. So anybody says, Oh, it doesn't work. I'm like, show me the last hundred calls you made. And they're like, yeah. uh, well, what do I say? Say hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're literally advertising. We buy houses. Well, I yeah. need to build a buyer's list first. That's how you build a buyer's list. They say we buy houses. There's a percentage that actually buy and not just wholesaling. So, yeah. and then there's another side of that is also you're going to get people say, hey, man, you know, I'm brand new. I don't know what I'm doing. I just went to a seminar and they said, put out bandit signs. Um, so, but there's internet bandit signs, right? And that's the we buy house signs on Craigslist and any big real estate forums. I don't even know. I, I'm really not involved in that stuff anymore. But like, I'm sure you can go online in 15 seconds and find thousands of people to call. <coughs> There you go. Okay, there we go. Had a had a little glitch. Um, so basically, you no, know, and it's it's um it's crazy, you know, because we we never haven't talked about this, but you guys, Craigslist, um, Zillow, Trulia, there's literally people more a lot of um for sale by owners now. People are going on and posting their stuff on Zillow and Trulia and these sites, and it's just like. It, I mean, compared to when, when I even first started marketing 05, it is so unbelievably easy now. I mean, oh, with technology so and how advanced it is and, and literally being able to, you know, we're not having to go and, and like pick up the phone and call friends and family and talk to them and, and explain to them, hey, this would be great, you know. Uh, yeah, I know you're in California, but it'd be great to buy houses over east. Well, right, and, and actually have to like convince them, right, like why exactly. it's good. Now you can literally – Go online uh, with the click of a, a button um, and go on to Craigslist, go on to Zillow, go on to Trulia and find people, you guys, that are literally buying houses. doesn't matter. People are buying everywhere. And so um, I think sometimes it's like, well, you know, I, I need this software to beat the edge. No, man, you got to get on the phone. You know, you I don't know if you heard Joe Evangelisti's um, talk the, uh, yesterday, the little live. So yeah, it's like, hey, man. Um, oh, there he is. Gave us some love on here. Um, Joe, Joe just said kaboom. So, um, but he said, you know, it was awesome about it's reps, man. You got to get on the phone and just get uncomfortable, like comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, I went through this, Mark. I know you probably have to go through it. We all do. Um, my son went through it, was terrified. Um, every person that I ran into um, goes through this. Um, Joe went through in anything it, you know? in anything. This is in anything. anything. Yeah. I mean, if anybody that's excelling has done the reps, period. Hey man, the first time I, I stepped into um a major league box in a in a big league game uh in spring training, man, I was like, I don't even remember the first two pitches. <laughs> you know, sure. I like, I'm like, I don't even know what he threw. Um, but that's why we got three strikes, you know. So um, but I mean, hey, it's it's just that's gonna happen. And so just, you guys, I want, we want to encourage you, Mark and I, just get on the phone, talk to people. Um, the structure of the conversation is really simple. 
Um, what are they doing now? Um, what are they trying to do? And what kind of issues or problems are they having? A lot of times it just comes down to that they're having a tough time uh, getting deals, right? Um, or they want to get more deals or um, who knows what it is. And so I think just, um, I mean, right now it is like, you guys, if you're out there wholesaling, man, and you're not doing at least, um, I know you're going to laugh at this far, but <laughs> you're probably thinking 20, but if you're not doing at least a couple of few deals a month, I mean, you're just not talking to enough people. I mean, that's just, the bottom line. You got to start with one. I mean, you got to get one to do 20, right? I think Absolutely. at the end of the day, you just got to do the work. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing I can say is stop making it about you. <laughs> You know, what's yeah. a conversation? I always picture it as dating. You don't walk into a bar and say, hey, I'm taking you home and sleeping with you tonight. And that's yeah. what investors do. They expedite conversations or want to be investors or beginning investors. So yeah. as opposed to like, hi, this is Mark. What's your name? Have a conversation yeah. and get to know someone. You know, yeah. talk for 30 minutes. Well, this so-and-so said it's only a five-minute call. Well, you're not so-and-so. And this is your first call. Have a conversation. My agenda, yeah. my agenda is to listen and help. That's it. No more, no less. So if you're yeah. going into those conversations with like, oh, I need to make 15 grand tomorrow. Or I can't pay my electric bill. You're screwed. You're, you're never, it's never going to happen ever. Yeah. It's all you're about not, you. Exactly. And you know, we, we talked about this in, uh, I don't know if it was last week or whatever, but it's like, um, you guys, it's about stop trying to sling, sling your shit as we call it or, or sell your deals. It's all about like helping them carry about them. If you can, I tell people, man, if you can spend an hour to two hours on the phone, that first call, man, your odds of winning are so big. Um, and I think, you know, it's like, hey, what are you, you know, building rapport? What are you doing now? What are you trying to do? And what kind of challenges are you having? Stop trying to sell your stuff, post it on, on Facebook groups in 20 of them and think that someone gives a crap and they're going to buy it. Um, you have no rapport with people. You have no relationship with people. People do business with people they like. They can't like you unless they freaking talk to you, right? So it's like, it, 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 it's really simple. Um, and so, uh, but great, great point, Mark. Um, you know, and uh, we basically emulate that and say that all the time. Hey, you got to care about people and want to help them solve whatever problem they're having. If you do that and focus on that, they're going to feel that. And um, it's just it, the whole conversation is going to be different. Uh, yeah, well, it, just, it will be different. Not only that, as you know, 90% of the conversation will never be about the house. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, hey, DJ, how you doing? Hey, so you at this house, blah, 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 blah. You know, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, you're talking about the house, right? <laughs> you know, and, yeah. then, and then they're like selling you. So a lot of, and then the second layer to that, especially in the beginning when you don't have money, because that was me for sure is I didn't realize not everything's about just not money. You know, I, they were more and more solution driven, not necessarily about money driven. So they're like, you know, listen, I, they can always sell for more. That's why it's called wholesale. They, you know, they're just done. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to call the agent. They don't want to clean the house. They don't want to stage it. They don't want to change yeah. the room collar. They don't want to change the carpet. They don't want to mow the lawn. And that's why you get a deal. So a lot of times people are like, well, why would they sell it if it's so much cheaper? The real question you should be asking yourself, who the cares? They're selling it. <laughs> Yeah. So they're just done with it. And we've all been there on some way, shape, or form. Pull out a pair of shoes in your closet that you've never worn or shirt and go sell it. You're never going to pay get it what you paid for. And it's just the facts. You're just gonna say, hey, put it in the yard sale for two bucks. Boom, done. And then you know yeah. the buyer of that doesn't say it's worth a hundred dollars. Why am I only paying two? It's like, no, dude, it's a deal too. I'm gonna turn around, flip it on eBay for seven. You know, yeah. so or whatever, I'm making that simpler. Actually, it is that simple. That's what's crazy about it. It's that simple. Mm hmm. And people, I mean, people out there, uh, Mark, you know, obviously in, in, in your market, in my market, um, yep. you know, people, especially in various parts of the country, sometimes they haven't heard like, holy crap, I can buy a house for, you know, 10,000, 5,000, 20,000, 30,000, whatever, 40,000, 50,000, shoot, even a hundred, you know, people are in college, I can get a house for a hundred thousand. Oh my God. You know, when they haven't heard of it. And so, um, you know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter. You know, you guys, it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, there's properties that are listed on the market that we bought, like taking them. Maybe it's a HUD or Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, whatever, and flipped to an investor and made 20, 30, 40,000. 
And it, it doesn't, you don't have to always think that, you know, you need um, the secret sauce, you know, go out, take action, get on Zillow, get on Craigslist, get on Trulia, get on these sites and literally just start building um, rapport. You know, Will Smith said, I lay one brick. My dad taught me, you probably saw this, lay one brick, perfect. And then I stack another brick on it and I lay that, that brick. And pretty soon by doing that, I have a wall. It's the same thing with investors. Um, you're going to have that same thing with investors, you guys. Just get one, under, you know, and I'm not saying just get one, but like just, just be methodical, be consistent and understand that this is like a long play, you know, Mark. I mean, some, so many people like, you, you know, uh, it, it's like, I need to do a deal. I got to, oh man, I got to pay my, my rent. And that mentality, you know, let's talk about that. Um, the lack mentality versus the abundant mentality. Um, we could probably talk about that all day, but, sure. um, but you know, give, give some insight on, you know, cause I went through that myself. I remember the first deal I did, I made two grand. I'm like, damn, that was pretty cool. Now let me see if I can make three. And I had this barrier that I put on myself that had I not had that there, I would have just made 20 grand out of the shoe, but I limited what I was worth. Um, so share it, like, share it, like your, your view on that, on the mental side. Man. Well, I mean, listen, I think your first five deals, if you make a dollar or zero, you win the game, right? Because you stay, you know, you're either consistent or non-existent. And more importantly, you actually create movement, which creates momentum. And then off, off, with all, both of those creates confidence. And mm -hmm. the only reason you're able to get more money now, you and I, right, DJ, it's not because we're smarter. It's because we have more confidence. We have a knowledge base built upon, and you know, we have repetition behind us to stand behind what we're offering. We know what people want because we're asking, we're conscious, we're finding great product, we're negotiating good deals on both sides. So mentally, you know, we just got to, like, to me, you got to have a big purpose so the process becomes insignificant. The pro I, I genuinely miss the process, though. You know, I, I miss the, not struggle as much, but I miss, like, grinding it out. You know, I loved it. Truth is, from until I was 27 years old, I didn't mind working from 4 a.m. to 7, uh, 11 p.m. every day, I enjoyed, seven days a week. I never took vacation. I just wanted to work. I loved what I did and uh, making an impact. But I, I would say this here. At the end of the day, too, right, DJ, there's people laying in bed right now. So let's say you're a wholesaler watching this. There's sellers laying in bed that can't get out of bed physically because they're sad, scared, overwhelmed, stressed, frustrated, confused, and all of and everything else in between. And if you did marketing and called them and they answered, or you did a band of sign, or you did direct mail, or you put an ad and they actually saw it at 2.30 in the morning and they called and left you a message, you can actually help people. So it's not just about making money. To me, the purpose has to be bigger in the process and getting on the phone with them and saying, hi, Nancy, how are you? And she's like, oh my gosh, you don't understand. Like really under having a conversation with them, treat them like your grandmother or grandfather. Like these are huge. I, I think a lot of times this gets lost in translation, translation, translate, translation. <laughs> I just got these lips and tongue today. But what happens, it gets lost in translation that it's all, oh, it's just money, 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 you're a number. Dude, in the beginning, it's all about personal connection. You know, yeah. it's really understanding what's going on and why are we talking, right? They're not talking to you because they want to sell for full retail, motivated sellers, that is. <clears throat> and, you know, and another thing I see is people are talking to agents, and agents aren't motivated sellers. Not to say all of them, but 99.9% .9 of them don't really understand what we do. So to me, it's like you got to have a big purpose, understand the mental aspects of what we're really doing. Not We're not just doing real estate. Truth is, real estate is just a byproduct of connecting with the person. Absolutely, man. Hey, uh, you know, we, and we talk about this all the time in, in our uh, academy and everything. It's like on flipping on demand, we say, Hey, um, serve them like, uh, like, uh, Mark, uh, uh my you know, rest with people say, Hey, serve them all, let God sort them out. If you can focus on them and, and helping them and, and help them solve a problem that they're having, um, just like Mark, what you're saying, Hey, Tell me what's going on. What do you, you know, rather than, hey, tell me about the house, right? Well, it's a three bed, three bath. Okay, does it have a fireplace? Does it have a garage? Does it, how's the roof? How's this? Okay, we'll call you back. And like, you guys, if you're doing that, you're absolutely going to lose. 
and sure. you're leaving so much on the table. It's about, hey, um, you know, where are you from? Oh, I'm from San Francisco, right? I get someone says they're from San Francisco. I'm like, oh shit, this is gonna be a great call, right? Do you eat rice and roni? No, I'm sure. By the way, you, what's that? <laughs> I said, I, I'd be like, do you eat rice and roni? Do they actually really <laughs> jump on the drinks? <laughs> Have fun with them, make them laugh. It's not a serious, yeah. like, that's serious. Like yeah. to me, like it's marketing disruption. It's a conversation disruption. Everyone's like a robot. Hi, I'm calling about your three bedroom, two bath house. Is this the address? How many? Why are you selling? Like it's all robotic, and it's it, it, I'm, what's crazy. That model works not as well, but that model works. People have companies that do that in foreign countries. So as opposed to like you know they say something like that, and then you say something crazy over the top, not disrespectful, but funny. All of a sudden they're like, huh. you know, I've talked to five other investors. You're actually a real one, you know. And then before yeah. you know it, you're sitting, in, you know, you put a deal together. North Carolina, man. I remember I lost my virginity in North Carolina. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, but you know, um, that's the crowd is. yeah, that's another story. But uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. To talk to the crowd, but you know, it's it's like yeah. I mean, it's it's having fun. Um, and I say so. You have an hour, two hour talk where you're laughing. Um, you're having you know great conversation, and there's this bond, right? Um, everything else falls into place. The numbers, the deal. What you get it for, if it's an investor especially, um, you know, everyone's different. Some are short, some want to get to the point. Um, and, but if you can have that conversation and build, you guys, people do business with people they like. I've never met, uh, very rarely, like, are there people that will buy a deal because it's a great deal? Yes. Um, absolutely, there are. It's a good deal. They want it, whatever. That's fine. But if you're going to build um, repeat business, um, and just like you have Mark, just like we have, you know, that you have to have a relationship. And if, you know, you talk about it, hey, did you, this person uh, didn't respond to my text. Okay, well, um, go into their Facebook, friend them, like some pictures, send them a gift, right? Do something that's, that disrupts the same pattern. Stop calling them. Or well, I call them for the last three weeks and they haven't answered and I text them and they haven't responded. Well, shit, do something different. Right, like think outside of the box, and um, you know, you talk about like sending gifts to people. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we're big gift givers, but I do have a good uh, voicemail for you guys if you're calling someone three or four weeks in a row or more or less, and you really you want to alive? connect with them. What's that? Are you alive? No, no, no. So the good message is like, hey, DJ, it's Mark. I got a question for you today, though. I've been calling, leaving you messages, but today I woke up and I spoke to God, but I can't speak to you. Go figure. Right? <laughs> How come I can speak to God and not you? You know, hook me up. So, but again, it's funny. Like they, you know, they got 50 other messages. They hear that one and they're like, shit, that's kind of funny. And then they hit you back and like, hey man, you made me laugh for the day. What's up? What do you got? And then boom, conversation starts. But you have no chance unless you're talking to someone. Zilch. You know? Exactly. I always love the guys that message me once back in the day and then they message me a second time because I don't respond because Maybe I'm actually busy or doing something and or it's not important to me at the moment. And they're like, yo, dude, you're being a dick. You really don't buy property, do you? Ha, ha, ha. It's like, all right, cool, delete. You know, it's like, first of all, that's about you, not about me. And you don't know what I got going on. And, you know, yes, you're not important in my life at all. My wife and my son and my parents and my people I care about are. So yeah. if you're disrupting someone's time, you better have something of good, good, like good stuff and make me laugh or you got to disrupt something, you know, in a cool way. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I do a, I do a text. Um, if I don't hear from people, um, one of the things I do that, that gets a really high response rate, funny enough, is I'll say, um, Hey man, are you alive? With uh, like three question marks. Right. And I'm telling you guys like 80, 90% of the time people reply back. Oh man. Hey DJ, sorry, man. I've been busy. I've been doing this, you know, um, let's talk tomorrow. Um, and so it's like, what can I do different? Um, maybe it's social media, right? Going on social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, sending them a message through there or something, but disrupt it. You guys do something different to actually get a, a conversation because just like what you're saying, Mark, unless you're on the phone, um, you know, you're, that's how deals are done is by yeah. you know, talking to people on the phone. There's no push button this, there's no push button. You know, I sold, you know, 20 homes and didn't talk to one person and none of my team talked to a person. You guys, that doesn't exist, um, right? I mean, if it does, Mark, tell me because I've, I'll, I'll I've, I've, I've done it before, but I've done 212 properties like that once. But uh, that's actually how Peter got into the business with me. 
But um, yeah, I mean, I didn't talk to anybody. I did a webinar. They all went online. They paid. Then they went to the next step. They actually picked the lot they wanted, and push a button, and then that created the contract. They pushed a button and auto signed their name, and then it went to title, and then it closed. And we never talked to them at all. It was crazy, man. So, yeah, but that's a, that's a little bit different. I was a little bit. I was into the game a little bit heavier back then. I loved it. I, I'm always trying to ask myself how to not talk to people. So again, but again, real estate is a humanization business. It's humans involved. So you have to figure out a way to create a personal connection, even if it's not you doing it, i.e. gift giving. Or what's cool too, another thing is we got these things in our hand, shoot a video and say, hey, what's up, man? You know, Mark, just touch a base with you. I know you probably get lots of messages, blah, 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 boom. Send to them, like connect with them. Let them see that you're a real person and not, you know, some call center in a foreign country. So there's a lot of cool tricks and strategies. Oh, but at the end of the day, DJ, everything we're talking about, you actually gotta do the work. <laughs> so that's the problem. I think this is where most people are failing. And what do you and what do you think, Mark, in relation to um, you know people investing in themselves and um, you know it, be it be it masterminds or you know mentorship or something? Um, how do you feel? What is your your view and, and stance on that? Yeah, I, I have a lot of views on it. I think first and foremost, most if you're not willing to invest in yourself, why would someone invest in you? Um, in many ways, I think there's a you know we live in an amazing universe. And, you know, I think it's the law. Like if you give into the universe, it comes back to you many times over. Some people call that tithing, but I think it happens on many levels, such as me investing. I, I invest in one group, a hundred grand a year for three meetings. It's 34 grand a meeting. That's what it costs me. So when I do that, actually, I show up, right? If you don't pay, you don't pay attention, period. So yeah. when you're investing in yourself, you actually allow the universe to step to you and say, hey, you know, I'll take a step if you take a step, if you will. But a lot of people, the truth is they just don't believe in themselves enough. They know they give up all the time and they're quitters, that they just don't do it. So when I talk to people, this is why, you know, I've talked to many people like you have, DJ. It's like they're not investing in themselves because they're so afraid that they're going to drop the ball again. And I can tell you, out, just keep it. You're, one, if that's happening, you're not investing enough because you don't have enough to lose. I had no, I had everything. To lose. I, I literally spent every dime I had to go to an event. And I saw a guy make a phone call, and I was like, I can do that. And that's what I left with. I didn't leave with 5,000 things to do tomorrow. I actually generated an opportunity for myself by investing in myself. You know? Hey, you, you, no. you, glitched out, you glitched out on me for a quick sec. So you saw that you saw a guy make a call. You said, I can do it. Then what did you say after that? Yeah, then I was able to go. I, I didn't go there to learn 100 things. I went there to get the confidence to do one thing. And I think the problem is everyone's out there trying to figure everything out before they do anything. And the truth is, yeah. life, nothing in life is like that at all. Yeah. No matter what you do, nothing's playing out that much. So yeah. you got to take a step. But investing in yourself, I'll, I'll do it first. Yeah, man, and you know it's um, it's it's amazing uh, when you know just like your your um, uh, deal with them, right? That you had, uh, I connect and like you're like it's gonna be a mountain. I'm like shit, I need to get there. And I message you, you go, hey, dude, it's full. Um, and you know, um, I like I don't have, but if something happens, if someone cancels, um, I'll let you know. Um, I'm like, cool, man, do what I'm in, right? And then you let me know. Uh, I'm like, hey, man. Um, how much is it? 5k. Okay, man, I'll, I'll go wire it to you. Right. And, and it's like, to me, um, I, yeah, everything is just an ROI. Like, Hey, if I invest this, um, you know, there's a lot of would think I used to think, I mean, probably you did too. Like, Oh my God, I'm going to invest a hundred grand a year in, in, you know, masterminds and being around people and stuff. That's a waste. Right. But that's like the complete opposite of what it really is. And it's like, um, just even going to that event to give you an example. So I sold in, you know, 5,000, we connected obviously, um, on a deeper level, um, known each other for like 13 years, uh, met in person for the first time. And then, but, uh, and then I met uh, Jeremy pool, right. At the real estate social, um, connected with him that led to doing a, a show with him in the moment that's leading to bigger things connected with Joe Evangelisti, um, who, you know, is becoming a, a good friend as well. And, and Ray, and, you know, and so like, it, it's just like what that investment, that, that, so the reap that's going to come from it is, I mean, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
And so, so ideally millions, absolutely. Millions, yeah, possibly. And so it's like, you know, if you guys are looking at anything, I don't care what it is, just stop looking at what stuff costs. This is my advice. Stop looking at what stuff costs and think, man, I don't care what I got to do to get this. If You know, if it's a house, if it's whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, going to a deal with on with Mark, um, whatever it is, what is this going to cost? And what is the upside that I could gain out of it? Yeah. And, um, and, you know, just start looking at things from that perspective. Um, it will really shift and, and change how you do things. So um, one more thing, man, I want to um, I want to chat about is, um, man, great chat, by the way. We just, uh, hey, man, no, you guys in, in this every week, you know, I, I do these uh, uh, live broadcasts to just really bring everyone, uh, you know, value, call them uh, people that I'm friends with, connected in the industry, to come on and bring everybody value and tips and advice. So you guys, just like what Mark and I did, had to go, um, you know, get beat up. But I look back and go, hey, man, you can't be the can't be a heavyweight champ if you don't take some punches, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so just, just to help you guys not maybe, you're still going to take some punches, but just maybe not take as many. Um, or learn to duck and weave and how to navigate through some of these landmines and some of these hurdles um, that people like Mark and I had to go through, um, you know, just to just to genuinely help. Um, and so uh, as far as Mark, uh, one last thing, man, um, you're in Columbus, um, Ohio. So if, if there's also... I do deals in Columbus. Florida. Do deals in Columbus. Yeah. So, um, so if another source, you guys, is wholesaling, uh, connecting with other wholesalers, right? Um, and that wow. actually are going out and finding deals. Like, listen, if you can go out and find deals on your own, awesome. But what if you connected with, say, twenty or thirty other wholesalers? Like, like even if it was five, right? Legitimate ones that you want to work with, that are solid, that are people you like. Do business, you guys, with people that you want to do business with, and not just go out and find deals yourself, but also have them bring the deals, right? So, any of you guys that are in, um, if you're looking to do uh, this business, or if you're a wholesaler and you're uh, in the Columbus, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, Akron, Ohio, Canton, Ohio, any of that area, which is probably, I would say, maybe the number one area as far as people buying right now, Mark, right? At the low price, um, you know, low, low risk cash flow kind of region. I'll buy everyone. Oh, yeah. We buy everyone. We're buying stuff up to 300000 so, $500,000. So, so we buy all types of properties. Property. If it's a deal, we buy, we buy deals. Yeah. <laughs> so, you don't yeah, care what the price is. Prices. So does it, so if there's wholesalers, uh, obviously there will be um, watching this. Um, what is the best way, and I can I can put it in your buddy, What's the best way for them to uh, to get in touch with you? Best way is on Instagram, man. Honestly, private message me on Instagram at Mark Evans DM. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put on the screen right here. Um, so there it is at Mark Evans DM. So awesome. you guys, if you're if you're in this this uh, in the Cleveland region, Columbus, Canton, uh, Akron. Uh, any of that whole area, and you're actually a wholesaler. This right here is the biggest source uh, from a, an actual buyer that you can even want to work with is Mark. Okay. So if you guys are out there, you want to do deals, reach out to Mark uh, at, at Mark Evans uh, DM, which is right on the screen here. On Instagram. On Instagram. On Instagram. Yes. And, and make sure that um, you connect because this is how – uh, connecting with guys like Mark in that area, um, I can tell you this: if you bring if you bring Mark a deal uh, and it's a deal, they're buying it, right? They don't people don't guys and gals. People don't give a crap what you have it for, what you're signing it for. All this stuff doesn't matter. If it's a deal, the the real investors that are out there like Mark, they're going to buy it, sure. right? Um, and so. Uh, make sure that you guys connect with, uh, you know, go to Instagram at Mark Evans uh, DM, connect with them. Uh, if you're in Ohio, Columbus, uh, Cleveland, Akron, Canton, any areas that I missed, 
No, those are it, man. Columbus, we're big in Columbus and Cleveland. Like I said the outskirts are there, but message me on Instagram and I'll introduce you to my, my acquisitions team. If it's a deal, we'll, we'll hook up and make some money together. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Hey, big shout out to, uh, did you see Trevor, uh, Trevor Mock, that thing he posted, a uh, top uh, Trevor Mock investor carrot and posted, um, I think he was one of the, uh, shout out to Trevor, man, my buddy, um, investor carrot, one of the top 50 nice uh, fast, fastest growing companies in Oregon. Really cool. Um, much love, buddy. Um, we got to talk some baseball here. And then, uh, hey, man, what? So, hey, prediction, right? Uh, give us a prediction on the on the Cavs winning it this year, man. I, I don't know what's going on. What's, they're going to win, I guess. I don't, I don't follow. <laughs> I literally don't follow sports. What's going on with the Cavs? <laughs> hey, man, that's a that's an example right here. Um, uh, no, it's a, they're, they just won and um, oh, nice. I think second round. And so, man, I figured you'd be plugged into that. I, if I'm in Cleveland, I might go to one of the championships games, take someone I care about, to yeah. great experience, but I have zero clue what's going on. I, I, I barely know what's going on with my numbers. I don't need to worry about anybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stay, stay focused, man, right? Stay focused on uh, on your own numbers and – uh, and what you're doing in your business. So kind of some takeaways, you guys, KPIs, know your numbers, um, know what's going on, build relationships with people, get to know them, uh, you know, have some laughs with them, uh, have that, that fun, enjoyable conversation. Um, what else did we uh, go over? Do the work. <laughs> do the work, man. Yeah. 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 Make the calls. Got to dig in and do the work. No, there's no, no substitution for it, man. Um, got to put in the reps, right? Like Joe says, nope. only way to do it. So, Hey man, much love, buddy. Uh, when, when, you coming out, when are you coming back out this way? Um, I was just out there and I was in the Phoenix area last week, but, um, I'm heading uh, from here to Joe's event, charity event in Jersey. And then June 19th and 20th is my last deal So I'll be up in Columbus, Ohio for that. But, um, 40th birthday. Last deal a thon, but that's it, man. I'm, I'm not, I don't have any other plans on the West Coast for another six months, I think. When's the, when's the birthday? June 19th. Of uh, this month? Yeah, uh, next month. Today's, this is May. But yeah, June 19th of this year. The big 4 0. The big 4 0, my man. Hey, man, they, you know they say 40 is the new 20. I'll take it. Also, I feel like I'm. I act like I'm 20. I don't know if my bones do, but I. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Hey, man. Much love, buddy. We'll catch up later. Thanks for coming on today. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Everybody. Right, yep. Bye. Bye.